I'm going to keep this very casual. I really wanted to bring something to my uh, followers on social media and people who go to my YouTube. And I have a lot of questions for you. We're going to keep it light and simple, but I want you to introduce yourself so that everybody knows who I'm talking to. So if you can give me a brief bio, uh, that would be great. You want the official or the fun bio? Give me the fun bio. We're not going to keep this official. We're going to do this light and fun so that it's enjoyable and people can then um, go to my social media or your social media and they can ask us questions and we'll follow up. Okay. Well, okay. as you know, I am a psychologist in LA, just where you are at as well. And I specialize in transgender care. That's pretty much all I do. And the fun thing about my work is that I get to meet all the amazing, great people that mm -hmm. then to undertake transition or maybe not, you know, to each its own. It's kind of a personal thing, as you know, highly, highly individualized. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the best part of my job. Uh, another thing that I absolutely love doing is, as you can see behind in my home, all the books, a big book nerd. And a lot of people don't know about this, except for some of my clients, because I do have books on the subject in my office, is that I am a huge, huge tarot and anything that's witchy and a cold fan huge wow i did not know that about you pretty cool yeah i should do your tarot reading one time yeah i'd love that i've never had one done really really Ooh, mm -hmm. that can be exciting <laughs> i would love that yeah, yeah you know what you could learn about yourself right yep mm -hmm. okay well that was very interesting i didn't know that so um how did you get into the specialty, into the transgender specialty? You know how many people ask me this? And every single time, I think I must have some amazing, crazy story how I stumbled into this or how I had a calling or a dream one day. You know, everybody has like this great story. Yeah. It's pretty simple. You know, I was doing internship after master's degree and my first client was a trans identified woman. And I just went from there. I just fell in love working with this type of population, people questioning their gender, trying to figure out their sense of identity. Mm -hmm. And I think what really got me into it is I had some of my colleagues at the time who felt that it was a big deal to change gender. And I personally didn't feel anything about it. I thought, if you can learn Italian and move to Italy and call yourself Italian, what's the difference, you know, type of attitude. So I just kind of picked up and like I said, fell in love with it. And it's been with me ever since. So not that of exciting story, but maybe one day I'll create some crazy narrative of how <laughs> I found myself in this profession. Well, that's very interesting. I did not know that about you either. Although I have known you for a while, I don't think we talked about any of these things. So this is going to be fun. Yeah. So, I get asked all the time, um, explain what transgender means. Okay, how much time do we have? <laughs> and um, let's, let's keep it shorter, and that way we can move on to other things. But when I say explain what transgender means, I'm really looking for um, not a clinical explanation, but what I would like for you to do, since you specialize in this, is maybe help people out there that are possibly entertaining what they're feeling and they're not really sure. So maybe a less clinical version would help them understand more, you know, maybe that could be me or no, that's not me. Or maybe I need to see someone and take this further. Yeah. You know, I say it's going to take a long time because it's very difficult to use the word transgender today because the word has taken on such a huge umbrella term. And in many ways, it became a problem. And in many ways, it's not a problem. So just speaking about what it means to be transgender is problematic in of itself. So today, at least when people say transgender, they're, they're clustering everything under this umbrella, okay? Mm -hmm. In general nutshell, I would say that if you're somebody who is either not comfortable with your biological sex or not comfortable or feel congruent with your gender expression or gender role that people perceive you to be in this society or in this culture, that's something for you to question and to learn about yourself. 
that may put you under big umbrella of what transgender is, but that does not mean necessarily that you need to go on hormones, have surgical transition or transition. That just means that some aspects of what we consider gender today, male, female, at least in today's culture, very binary, right, as you know, that just means that you're not comfortable which, with whichever one was assigned to you. That's all. And that's up to you to investigate. So transgender is very big and broad. And, you know, there's all these people under umbrella, transbinary individuals, non-binary, gender bending, gender queer, although everybody's gender non-conforming. So it's very, it's confusing. That's actually a really good explanation because I think that helps people understand um, maybe that they should explore seeing somebody if they're feeling a certain way. Yeah, I always, always advise people to explore because the issue is, like I said, it's, we used to think that transgender is somebody who's not comfortable with their biological sex and therefore not comfortable with their body. What we're learning now is that there's people who are very comfortable with their body, but they're not comfortable with the gender role or gender expression, how they express themselves, and therefore are also transgender. So this is why it's, it's lesser issue of maybe body per se, although that's a really important component, right? But much more of an issue of if you're just not comfortable with the gender assigned to you, that you, through the lens of which you're being seen, and if you're not comfortable with that, explore. And then figure out what that means for you, and it may may not mean transition. Okay, which brings me to my next question. That's very interesting. Do you believe that everyone who wants to transition is in fact trans, and why or why not? And how do you identify if someone should transition or they should not transition? Okay, so um, I don't think it's my job to believe if somebody is or isn't trans. And that's because identifying as trans is somebody's own subjective experience, their own subjective relationship to their gender. Just like you feel, I assume you feel comfortable in your female role as a cis female, right? I, I'm making an assumption now, but let's say you confirm and you say, yeah, I'm totally comfortable with that. I right? do. But, you know, how am I supposed to believe you? That's your subjective reality. There's no task I can give you that will affirm for me that you are in fact as comfortable in your gender role as you come across to be. So I don't really see it personally as somebody who holds a belief. Um, I think that people need to believe in themselves and not have others people believe in them. I think first and foremost, they really need to carry that within themselves. The second question that you asked was whether, um, what was it? was it whether people who transition really should transition? Yeah, why or why not? Okay. Why should they or should not? Why should they or they should not? Is there something um, that sometimes you can identify when you're treating someone that would give you pause or give them pause? Because let's face it, transition is a big thing. Yes. Right, you don't snap your fingers and become somebody else. You're still you. We have to work through our issues and so my question is, and I've, I've seen patients in my own office who have detransitioned, and my, then, you know, I wonder, is there something that they could have seen coming or maybe something that not you in particular, but a therapist that they're, you know, seeing could have identified to save them the years or months and the surgeries and obviously the hair removal, just the, the journey that they shouldn't really take. Is there something that could prevent that or maybe something you can identify that would help them make that choice? Yeah, that's another really tough question. I, I think it matters on, on how- Sorry for the tough questions. This is just all the stuff that I get in my office. And I ask you, you know, let's conquer this because I haven't really, I haven't found anyone that talks about this or maybe they have, I just haven't found it. Let me ask you this. Before I can answer your question, the people that you see in your office who have detransitioned, do they tend to be younger? Generally, yes, but I've seen that one case that was on the um, mature side too. The case, okay, so let me put aside younger. The case that was on mature side, mm -hmm. um, was that, did you, and I don't know how intimately you know their story or yeah, how much they shared, right? But, um, did that seem like the case that they decided to detransition because it was too difficult and there was lack of resources? 
or was it a case they decided to do transition because they realized, holy shit, this is not for me at all. I'm not even trans. Yeah, I think it was the, the first part you said. I think when, um, you know, people that are older decide that they're not going to transition, that it's a matter of they've already had their families and they're going to lose certain things in the process. They've tried it. It's too difficult. And then they go back. Okay. So this is very, very important distinction. And I'm glad you shed some light on it because this is huge when we talk about the transitioners because we don't want to cluster the light under this and say that, you know, transition in of itself doesn't work, right? Because it's obviously does work. And I'm seeing exact same thing that you just talked about where the statistically people who did transition, if they're older, the only cases I personally seen are the ones where it was too hard. Mm -hmm. they realized that it was going to be way too much financially costly or they, like you said, they lost their families or risking losing their families. There's too much also, Because the testosterone has really done its own number on them. Usually we see it with trans women too, right? Mm -hmm. Where they just realize they may need that much more work to put in in the passability and being passable is important to them. Yes. So I see all of those things, but I, I never see anybody who identifies as transbinary, right? Because that's surgical tradition for most part is for a lot of transbinary folks, but and some non-binary, but we're talking about upper part of the body. Where people will transition and then they just say, I regret it. But I do see that with much younger population. Okay. And the reason why I think I see it with a lot of younger, I actually did a YouTube video on my channel about um, the transitioners and what can we learn from them. And I think what I tend to at least observe in this younger population talking about it is that a lot of things. One is, unfortunately, we live in a culture where we want quick fixes, right? We want everything yes. now. Yes. So we rush into things. I'm glad you brought that up. That's, that's like the biggest. Everybody, I see so many youngsters today reach out to me. And I'm talking about, because I only work with adults, 19, 18 years old, 20 years old who say, I just watched so much YouTube video, somebody transitioned so quickly, you know, I, I wanna do it right now, I wanna do it quickly. It doesn't work like that, right? right? So I'm also seeing a lot of people who are confusing their challenges with their gender expression, mm -hmm. with the need for transition. Gender expression, if you have an issue with gender expression, experiment, try on different things, try on different pronouns or try on um, even how you express yourself with clothing. Maybe you fall somewhere in between a drama, just representation, right? Don't, there's really no need for hormones. So that's another thing is that I think younger people have forgotten how to sit with themselves and to listen to their inner voice. You know, that inner voice you and I grew up with where, you know, before you make decision, you sleep on it and then you sit down and maybe you have a drink and then you sit down the next day and then you like attune yourself. Sit out a little bit. And you have this like gut feeling, yes or no, right? Yeah. They, we don't have gut feelings. Most people don't have it because everything is so heavily artificial intelligence, all of the social media and everything. So we see and we're accustomed to seeing and getting it. So mm -hmm. now they see it and they're like, oh, that's going to be me. That's how I'm going to turn out. This is how it's going to work out. And they, they started out and then they realized that, holy shit, this doesn't make me feel comfortable at all. I'm not a guy or a girl or non-binary. This doesn't feel right. And they turn back. And it's really unfortunate. I'm so glad that you're talking about this. This is such a huge moment right now. And I think we need to emphasize that, that they really need to take their time and dissect things rather than looking at a YouTube video and seeing someone go through a transition and expecting that now they are going to become this person instantaneously but the reality is that youtube person could have gone through a longer process too what we see today isn't real time exactly exactly so it's i keep telling people especially if you again i, I work with adults so i can't go anywhere below 18 anywhere as you know we don't develop our prefrontal cortex until we're about 24 27 it's a part of the brain that helps us make decisions helps us realize consequences of our decisions right this is why we see people even into their early 20s drive like crazy after drinking right and we wonder you're old enough why are you why are you acting like a teenager that's because this part is not developed so they're not thinking about consequences right so i'm not saying that 
it's not developed and you're not thinking about the consequence of what transition might entail. But what I'm saying is that your brain has not solidified yet to really make the best informed decision. Not for everybody. So there's a lot of trans folks that really maybe should have even transitioned way early before puberty hit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to negate that either. But I do, right. if, if, in other words, if you're somebody who's younger and who is really confused and not sure, but think you might be trans, that's a sign you need to explore. If you're somebody who's younger, who's sure, that has a lot of dysphoria, that has been uncomfortable with your biological sex and all of the other secondary characteristics from early on, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty solid right there. You know what I mean? But if you're really confused, and I think we see a lot of those people, and they will admit it on their YouTube, if you see any detransitioners, so yeah. say that, you know, I just was so confused. I was really confusing my expression with my gender identity and with my other things. So take your time, you know, six months to a year. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to take away anything from you. So what do you think is a rational amount of time? That's, a, no, that's very subjective and very tough. And I think that's going to vary on individuals and it's going to vary on how well people know themselves. You right. know, somebody... Somebody might just need just some time just to have insightful, maybe even conversation with somebody, maybe insightful conversation with a therapist or with their parents or with anybody, or even right. maybe with somebody who did transition um, to get kind of an insight and start thinking about those things. And somebody might need much longer. I think it depends. I would say the more eager and impatient you are and you just want that quick fix and you have that magical thinking, mm -hmm. probably would be better to just you know, knowing that that's how you are. Like, I know I'm very impulsive, you know, for that reason, there's that tattoo I really want to get really bad. I'm careful about contemplating getting it because I know I'm so impulsive. I well, know that that I'm the Scorpio in you, my love. You know, <laughs> hello. Right? So you know how it is. But I allow myself to be impulsive in some things in my life. So if I want a new tarot deck and mm -hmm. you know, I just want to drop $30 on a new tarot deck, and impulsively spend it. I allow that because my prefrontal cortex also knows that it's not going to completely take food off my table. You know what I mean? But with right. decisions that are life altering, I mean, transition is not buying Teradac. <laughs> it's not. Right. It's permanent. A lot of things are permanent. So it's I'm really glad you're saying this because I think also young people um, mistake. I think that the disconnect is the, the, um, how big the investment is. For example, if you're buying a new purse or a tarot cards, right? It's not a huge investment. This is something huge. And I don't mean financial, just financial. I mean an investment. I mean, it's time consuming. It's a process. So you're absolutely right. And I think that really helps that young people need to really process the investment that they're making. Yeah. And there's, like I said, I don't want to negate a lot of people who just have an innate know and they know they're sure. And that's mm -hmm. great if you're certain and you have done your pros and cons thinking and of course, go for it. I think that's, I'm always respecting this, you know, body autonomy. That's why I do evaluations for free for trans community because I respect that body autonomy and choice. Um, but I also see, I mean, this is just byproduct of today's generation. You know, even me now, I want that quick, you know, quick, uh, quick, and now, and I can't wait. This is why I love Amazon Prime so much. Nobody even waiting for books anymore. Oh, we all do. Tomorrow. And then when it says right? you can get it tomorrow, you're like, who are you kidding? Yeah. What do you mean you can't get it tomorrow? I know. It was supposed to be here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> See? So, <laughs> let me just go back and say again to the audience that you do free evaluations. Yeah. So I'm going to put your in Yeah, for California and Florida residents only. Um, California Florida resident. This is great. So I'm going to put your information um, when we're done with the uh, Zoom so that people know how to access your um, website and how to find you. And you're an amazing resource. So I'm really glad that we're doing this. So let's move on to our next question. What do you say to someone who's struggling with their identity? I'm assuming we're talking about gender identity because identity is huge, right? It's like a, a chi pie chart and, you well, know, gender is only part of it. Bit. Yep, we can get into that a little bit. But yeah, someone who's struggling with their identity. Um, I see if you're struggling with it, 
struggle is a good thing. Welcome the struggle. Struggle is like that knock on the door, you know, the tension that's telling you, hey, there's something about you that you haven't really realized about yourself. And it's past you. And so I'm here to help you realize that it's past you. So you become aware of it so you can embrace it. So I think struggle is a good thing when we're struggling with any parts of our identity, career identity, identity as a mother, identity as a partner, identity as a friend, you name it, right? That struggle is a sign. And I think those tension signs, those things that make us grow. We never grow when there's no, when things flow, we never grow. No, because there's, there's, no te- there's nothing to stretch. So I say, welcome to struggle and, you know, take a look at it and don't be afraid. It's in you already. Mm-hmm. It's not going to go away. I love it. I love that answer. Um, what are some of the things that you can tell parents to look for when their child is struggling with their identity? Now, I know you don't look, work with children, um, but let's face it, right? Everyone you treat is someone's child. Right. And it doesn't matter how old they are. Sometimes families will struggle with that person or the person struggles with the family based on their struggle with their identity. So what can you, what advice can you give them to help them when they're struggling? I think for most part, and you're right, I actually had uh, parents of adults contact me about their adult children. Um, so I agree with you, you know, once a mom, you're always a mom, once a dad, you're always a dad, you know, you're always a parent. Um, for some parents, it's tough, you know. I always tell people that, listen, you, your parents probably, if they're struggling with it, that's also a sign that they probably have your best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. Chances are. Um, yes, there are families who are just completely against anything that isn't outside of, you know, heteronormative binary world. Right? Of their own norm. Yes, there's theirs, they exist. But in general, if you parents are, if they trying to understand, they're trying to meet you halfway, but they're struggling, they don't really get it, that's not a bad thing. That just means that that, mus- that muscle, that internal muscle they have about understanding what gender is, it's not massaged yet because they're a different generation. And for you and me, who are cis people, who take our gender for granted. I bet you take your gender for granted because I do. I never think about it unless, you know, I stumbled into misogyny or other aspects of, right. you know. But other than that, when you and I wake up in the morning, chances are we don't even think about it twice, right? right. It's, just, it's natural. Mm-hmm. So for people who are cis, and most parents are cis, it's very difficult to even envision what the struggle might be. You know, so just give them time. And I always say educate. If you can find a resource, if you can find either a really good online person who talks about gender in a good level-headed without, you know, waving the, the trans flag up in the air type of way where it's very leveled, let them listen to that person. Have them call somebody who's professional and consult. Parents sometimes will call me and they'll just consult and then they'll, they'll say, look, I don't understand. Can you help me understand what gender dysphoria is? And we talk and sometimes, you know, just talking and getting a little bit more informed helps a lot. Kind of ease them into it a little bit. Yep. Don't just throw a brick at them and tell them this is what you're doing. No, no, don't do that. And, you know, as a parent, um, I can tell you that no matter what we feel for our children, we still love them and we do want the best for them. So I'm going to speak Probably not for most parents, um, but I think a good majority of them will be very supportive of their child because it's still their child. Yeah. It's just hard because I find that sometimes if you're a mom of a, a, a female and now it's going gonna, it's gonna to be your male child, sometimes you mourn the loss of that female And then it takes you a little while to come to terms with the fact that now you're going to have a son. Regardless of how they uh, come to terms with it, we as parents, I don't think you ever, for me anyways, you don't stop loving your children. It's just something that I think never goes away. No, I totally agree. And you know, it's, it's interesting. A lot of people in trans community don't really like that idea of parents mourning a part of them because they feel that they're very much alive. 
I always say that your parents have their own way of even using language to describe it, or even they have their own way of processing what's happening to you. It may not be your way, right? But at least they're processing it. That means they're on the way to now fully seeing you as you are. And that's a good thing, better than being stuck way in the back and seeing you as you're, you know. So that's yeah, definitely. That's true. Everyone processes things differently. So if they're still making progress, then progress is progress, right? Whether it's how we want it to happen, like you said, instantly, like today, yesterday, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> and it's, listen, transition is, it's not only overwhelming process for people who are doing it. When I have couples come in, mm -hmm. I, I'm very transparent in how I, where even I sit in terms of, hypothetically speaking, I'm married to a cis guy. And I tell my couples, couples, I say, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I am a trans specialist. I work with this population. I love working in this field. If my husband came to me today and said, I identify as a woman and I need to transition, I'm honest with you. I have no idea whether that would be a deal break. What would I do? I know I'd be supportive for sure. But whether I'm going to realize that as part of my marriage moving forward, I don't even know. I have no idea. This is just how complex and complicated it is also for the person on the other end. So I think yeah. it's important, you know, it, this is, it's a big deal for everybody. Absolutely, and everybody's affected differently. So I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation and this discussion, because I think the more you dive into it, there's, you realize that there's not just um, a black and a white issue, there's so much gray area in the middle right? So not everyone's going to react the same way. Okay, moving on to the next question. You're so good at this. I love it. I'm so <laughs> glad. This. I'm gonna, there we go. How young is too young, do you think, to begin transitioning? Now, I know you don't work with children. <laughs> and please, when people watch this video, just understand that I'm asking Natalia her opinion and her advice because she's a specialist and an expert in the trans community. She works with trans people all the time. Just because she doesn't focus on children doesn't mean that her opinion doesn't matter to me. And I'm asking you, so I want to hear from you. Because believe it or not, my patients ask my opinion all the time. Yeah. It's just your opinion. Okay, that's valid. Um, it is very, very hard to say. It truly is hard to say. And I'm not trying to dance around the question and, you know, getting it up. And, but it's really, really difficult to say. It's especially difficult for me to say because I don't know from a medical point of view how hormones may or not hormones necessarily because we don't really give hormones to anybody who's super young, right? Anyway, that's just illusion people have. But from a medical standpoint, I don't even have a clear understanding of when we arrest somebody's puberty. In other words, when we stop somebody's puberty from happening, I don't even know what it may or may not do to the body, okay? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, it's hard. You see, it becomes like a very difficult question. Yeah. Uh, I have seen, I'm gonna say this, I have had the only child I've had to work with when I was doing my clinical internship in Portland, Oregon. And this was, uh, I believe it was 14, yeah, 14 year old okay. boy that was assigned female at birth. Mm -hmm. Now this kid knew, I mean, there was not a shred in my doubt that this 14 year old needed to start testosterone. There was, you, you, when you're in a room with some individuals, the identity, if it's, if it's stabilized, it's very strongly felt. And I think clinicians who work with children can feel it. I trust my colleagues who specialize in this, that when they're with the kids in the room, just like with adults, mm -hmm. I can feel if somebody needs to go on hormones today, or if somebody needs to go on hormones six months from now, or if somebody needs to start transition pronto, or if somebody doesn't, I can feel it. So, you, you know, it's, it's a hard question because I think in societies, a lot of people like to spin it and make it as, as if everybody just making people transition immediately and then people regret it. I would have to say that people who work in this field, they take it with a lot of ethical responsibility because they know they're dealing with kids. Mm -hmm. So 
it, it's a tough one, but you know, kids can manifest dysphoria strongly really, really early on and have, you know, very strong, very, very strong symptomatic effects from it. I mean, we're talking about suicidal ideation at a very young age. My philosophy is that if your kid is having suicidal ideation, that is suicidal thought and they want to take their life because of their gender dysphoria, mm -hmm. well, I'd rather take a risk with hormones. You know what I mean? Even if that might later on, then taking a risk to toying with their life. That's right. how I see it. I like that, that answer. That, that's fair. And that's why I wanted to ask your opinion because I think that that was a great answer. Um, you want to take a chance, you know, this is your child. Um, their happiness is at stake, right? And we all know that when we don't feel like we're ourselves or we're struggling with something, it just manifests itself into so many other things in life. Mm -hmm. So it's important. It's important that people take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a great answer. So I have another question. Um, Actually, no, I think that's it. Nice. Um, Those were some really good ones too. Maybe one more. I'm going to throw one more at you. <laughs> um, what is the biggest challenge you see in people who transition? Money. Simple, money. Unfortunately, uh, we, live, we live in in a world, we live in U.S. where healthcare is a privilege. It's not a right. We think it's a right, it's a fucking privilege. You know this, right? You know this because I know this, right? Um, the better healthcare you have, the better coverage you're gonna have, the better doctors you're gonna see, of course, the better financial resources you have, meaning just plain money. Right. Uh, you're going to get better access to even top tier of professionals who are even that much better. That's just reality economics of the world, unfortunately. So I say money is always the biggest, biggest obstacle um, and one of the biggest challenges, more than anything else. Because when people say the biggest obstacle is, especially for trans women, is passability or not being able to pass, right. I say no, because I've seen football players. Mm -hmm magnificently transformed you have access to resources right the world is your oyster it really is and you can you can get you can it can go a long way so i say money unfortunately yeah it sucks but it's money so let me ask you this based on your answer what would you tell people who don't have access to all the resources and money or is there something that you um you can maybe share with them a link, a resource? Uh, what, what do you say to someone who says, I just don't have the money to transition? Fortunately, there's always shortcuts in life, right? There's always, and when I say shortcuts- That's why I love you. You just come up with answers. <laughs> well, listen, there's always, I know this because I came to this country when I was 13. My parents, we had nothing, right? I now hold a PhD. Did I have money to pay for my PhD? No. I'm not even going to tell you how much of a student loan I have behind my back. It's not even funny. You're going to think that I'm stupid to purchase my PhD with that money. I'm not sure I'll ever pay it off, but I took out a loan because it was important to me. I'm not saying that people have to take a loan, right? That's not the point. The point is that if resources is an issue, then sit down and create a very good roadmap for yourself. There's still a lot of providers that do really good, solid care at far less find them do your research you just have to put in a little bit more effort and find those individuals you know what i mean you just have to like with you you right now work with several insurances yes That's great you know what i mean so there's all these avenues there's all these things there's like me i provide those evaluation letters for free mm -hmm. somebody could say that i contacted one psychologist they said they have to see me for six months it's going to be you know 200 dollars an hour for six months i can't afford it i'm done Right. Or somebody else can say, okay, I'm going to see what else out there. And they search, search, and then they go, oh, she does them for free. There you go. You just saved yourself money. So when I say shortcut, shortcut is really what we make out of it, right? What you're going to put into it. Unfortunately, sometimes the shortcut can kind of stretch your process of transition, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is mm -hmm. also a good thing. There's silver lining in that because that gives you more time to integrate your sense of identity. 
rushing through transition, and that I mean people who want to go through, and a lot of my clients go through transition year to year and a half. They have resources year, year and a half, they're done. But that's physical part of transition. Integration still has to happen. So then they now have to integrate, see? So it's, it's you choose, right? You can integrate first, but then you can have those physical benefits of transition and you feel more holistic. Or you can go through physical first, but then you go through integration. So there's double sides to it, but there's always things out there. Just have to look for it. There's millions of people who have transitioned, you and I know them, yeah. who don't have a penny behind their back, mm -hmm. who look amazing. Yeah. I agree with you. There's something about being resourceful, right? When you don't have access to money. Um, I heard your story. My story is very similar. You know, I ended up doing this by accident. Um, but. <laughs> what an accident. <laughs> it really, like, it literally like what you do. It. I'm just imagining what you do. Like, how would, that, how would it play out as an accident? One day you went for your own hair removal and. Fell in not, love. At all, not at all. I actually, this is an interesting story. Um, I worked in corporate and I was harassed and I decided in my twenties that this is really not what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. And my company filed for bankruptcy and I got laid off and it was a blessing in disguise. So I had a choice, like, what do I do with my life now? Do I just go ahead and get another corporate job? And uh, I was about 25 at the time. And my aunt worked in a salon and she said, you should look into electrolysis. You make your own hours, you work with people you want to work with. And I said, what the heck is that? I never had any hair removal. And believe it or not, the next day I was registering for electrolysis school in Queens, New York. Don't have any idea what prompted me to do it. I couldn't tell you today for the life of me why I went and gave them cash deposit and said, fine, I'm doing this. I don't know anything about it or what it is, but the fact that I can be my own boss and you know treat the people that I want to treat and not be harassed was good enough for me. And never in a million years would I have said that this would have led me, um, this has been 25 years in the industry to where I am right now. Oh my God. You know, our stories are so similar because I was working for corporate in my 20s. Uh -huh. And kind of similar, mm -hmm. similar thing where one day I just, something happened and I said, I'm never working for anybody else. I can't, I can never dictate somebody my salary or my title or when, especially when I earned it. And I said, I'm going to go and master in psychology, you know, can't be bad psychology. I want to be sex therapist. I said, oh, I can talk about sex all day. That would be so great. And here I am. So I think that's, you know, you got to <laughs> find something that drives you, the driving force and just go visit them. For some people, it's their gender, part of their gender past, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because uh, we know the transition is not something somebody just, you know, wakes up one day and goes, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Considering right. how strenuous it is and how much it costs, it's not a walk in a park. So it's, it's challenging, but some people, when they're really, like you said, resourceful, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing that people can accomplish way more than people that have resources. I agree. And there are a lot of hidden little resources, you know, for example, um, insurance companies. I know this because I've spoken to a bunch of people about the insurance industry. Um, they will cover a lot of things for trans people, but you have to get on them. If you go into, uh, you know, a conversation with uh, someone from your insurance company and they say, no, we don't cover that. And you say, oh, OK, great they may think, great, now we don't have to cover that. But honestly, if you are the squeaky wheel and you continue to say, no, I pay my premium, it says you cover this. So yep. try to get an advocate on your side, push the boundaries a little bit, let them connect you with someone else. Like it really benefits someone to not be pushy and rude, but be your own advocate. Push for the things in life that you really need the most Exactly. with a positive attitude. And I guarantee you, you'll be surprised how many times the doors open. You know what the trick is? Do it when you're in a bitchy mood. Make those phone calls when you're in a bitchy mood, uh -huh. <laughs> right? I mean, think about 
I'm thinking about in my early days, how many times there was like an overdrawn fee or something and you're calling the bank to take uh -huh. it off, right? For me, yep. this is my mother. If somebody on the end says no, I'm like, okay, tomorrow there'll be another person who's gonna say yes. And what happens, yeah. you call tomorrow, you get another bank teller who's maybe had a better day today and they're nicer, they say yes. Yep, absolutely. So I think being resourceful is very different than not having resources. Yeah. So this was great, Natalia. I'm so glad that I interviewed you and I think that you shed so much light. And I think um, a lot of people are gonna be very happy to watch this interview. Um, I feel like we're gonna get a, a lot of DMs and a lot of you know, feedback. So that's good because I wanna bring you back and I wanna talk to you about some more topics and maybe we can get a little bit more involved. I wanted to keep it light and simple today so that you know, people can- Oh, we got involved today. <laughs> I think I think we dove a little, you know, we took a dive a little bit deeper, but um, I know there's much more. Uh, we could talk about this all day. It's endless, you know. Um, I can't imagine how many people you see, and I can tell you from my own experience, everyone that comes in is so different and so unique, and they have such a great story. So I think that if we can shed some light and open the conversation up a little bit where people are like closed up and maybe suffering in some way and they're scared to reach out or they don't really understand what they should mm -hmm. be doing or they don't know how they're supposed to feel i think that you today shed some light on so many key points that they can now feel comfortable enough to maybe reach out to you or someone you know, because YouTube has a great large audience. And I know I have over 53,000 followers and you just never know who you're going to affect and in how many countries. I mean, I don't know about you and I know that you only can uh, treat people in Florida and California, but I get DMs and emails and um, messages from people all around the world. So here. The same key. and it breaks my heart that I can't I need to figure out a, a way is that maybe I can help them something on my agenda but I agree with you I get people from India from you know from all over from Australia from all over the place a lot of from UK and it's yeah and there's really not there's not much resources out there like really good solid resource honest resource no beating around the bush resource straight down you know uh, factual resource yeah. And that's why I love you because you're so authentic and you can connect to people. And you know, that that's so important when you can connect with people and they know that what you're telling them is honest. That's the best thing. You know, people feel like, let's just face it. The trans community is really, um, how do I put this? Uh, they're kind of a audience right in so many ways because if they reach out to someone and they get their information from someone who doesn't have their best interest in mind they might head in that direction and then learn down the road they spent money they followed that path and it didn't really serve them so it's unfortunate not that we don't have this in every part and aspect of life but you and i are discussing specifically the trans community yeah. today so it's it's really really important that um that we can get some uh good resources for them and maybe you can figure out how to um, create something that would reach you know globally yeah it's 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 a problem it's definitely a problem but yeah i well we'll have to brainstorm but you know this is why people call me edna from the incredibles from oh my god you look so much like her <laughs> but i also sound like her and have you ever seen edna she has that direct no bullshit attitude and this yes. is why people also gravitate toward my youtube videos because i'm just very i say it how it is and i try yeah. to be as honest as i can because you know, let's be honest, we don't have a lot of time. So why waste anybody's <laughs> time? So if I can get somebody quicker to have their aha moment, that's just great. I love it. You know, I always say, 
there's no do-over. You don't get to do this again if you didn't do it right the first time. This is it. Exactly. That's it. So we're not really well, it, <laughs> No, it was so nice talking to you. And um, we should do this again. I want to. I'll, I'll think of some, some new topics that my patients ask me about, or maybe people can, you know, contact us after they see this video and they'll have more questions and that would just open things up. Maybe I'll interview you next time. I have not questions for you. But <laughs> I would love that. Perfect. Done. It's a date. That sounds awesome. So now I'm going to go get my drink on and I think you're going to do the same. I had a really long day today and uh, I was looking forward to interviewing you. So thank you again for making the time. And I just adore you. I love you. I think you're doing such amazing things in the community. And I wish that I could literally just give your card out to everybody. But I know that um, you're very expensive. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That is true. And I'm very transparent about it. It's all over my website. So yes, that is very true. People get what they pay for. You know, I say that too. We're, we're very, we're kind of pricey too. Um, and we have very different methods of working, uh, you know, for hair removal. And we do that for a reason. So we're not everybody's cup of tea and neither are you. I wish that we could. Um, but you know, there's a reason why, because our approach is very unique and direct and different. And that's who we are. Yeah, you know, all this, I like to look at it as a cyclical type of thing. You know, I always tell people that because those people who can afford me, they enable me to have time to produce videos and blogs and free evaluations. So that way you can benefit. So it's like a cycle of everybody helping each other, you know? So I think that's important to take a look at it as like a holistic model. And I agree, not everybody's everybody's cup of tea and that is completely okay. Yeah. Totally. Well, thank you so much for tonight. I really love talking to you and uh, we're going to post this video and hopefully we'll do this soon. Perfect. All right. Take care, my love. Bye. Bye.